Hello and welcome to Science Monitor. A lot is happening in our country pertaining to science and technology and through this program we aim to acquaint you with the same. We shall throw light on such important events, developments and activities and enrich your scientific quest on various subjects from different angles and perspectives from time to time. And we'll also get to know about the Indian scientists making their mark globally in the field of science, technology and research. So let's start this episode with a quick preview of what's all in store for you. Eminent scientist CNR Rao conferred with the India's highest civilian award, the Bharat Ratna. India and Netherlands joined hands in research likely to find cure for many diseases related to brain. 101st edition of Indian Science Congress concludes in Jammu, event attended by a number of scholars and dignitaries. Cabinet Committee on Economic Affairs approves Agriculture Extension and Technology Mission. Australia and India plan to send BioRobo in the Indian Ocean to study marine environment and biology. And now the news in detail. Professor C. N. R. Rao was recently conferred Bharat Ratna, India's highest civilian award, by President Pranam Mukherjee in glittering ceremony in Rashtrapati Bhavan on 4th February. Professor Rao is the third scientist to get this prestigious award. Let's have a look at this report. 89-year-old renowned scientist Professor C. N. R. Rao was awarded the Bharat Ratna by President Pranab Mukherjee. Professor Rao is the third scientist in the country to have received the award. Prior to Professor Rao, eminent scientist C. V. Raman and former President A. P. J. Abdul Kalam have been awarded with this coveted award. The Bharat Ratan is the highest civilian honor of the country, which is given in recognition of exceptional services of the highest order in selected fields. The award was instituted on 2nd January 1954 by the then President Sri Rajendra Prasad. 41 eminent personalities have been honored with the Bharat Ratan since it was instituted. Professor Rao has deep knowledge of the subject of chemistry and in the last five decades he has 1,400 papers and 45 books to his credit on the topics of solid state and material chemistry. Professor Rao, who is also the chairperson of the Scientific Advisory Council to the Prime Minister, is currently working with the Jawaharlal Nehru Center for Advanced Scientific Research, Bengaluru. Professor Rao's contributions in the field of chemistry have been recognized by most major scientific academies around the world. The 101st Indian Science Congress was hosted in the city of Jammu this year. It was inaugurated by Prime Minister Manmohan Singh. Based on the theme, Innovations in Science and Technology for Inclusive Development, the mega-academic event went on from 3rd to 7th of February. The five-day Indian Science Congress was attended by thousands of scientists, researchers and students from India and abroad. The 101st edition of the Indian Science Congress concluded in Jammu on Friday. During the inaugural session on the 3rd of February, Prime Minister Manmohan Singh praised the efforts being made by Indian scientists. He was all praised for the commendable work being done under ISRO, Earth Sciences and Indian Atomic Program. Dr. Singh also mentioned the second phase of the fast breeder react at Kalpakkam, which is scheduled to finish this year, and stated that the day it happens, it is bound to be written in golden birds in the history of science and technology of our country. Among the projects announced by Dr. Singh were the National Mission on High Performance Computing and a neutrino-based observatory in Tamil Nadu. The Prime Minister also insisted on instilling the scientific temper among the common man so as to build a positive scientific environment in our country. Our science should be a driving force propelling India as a resurgent civilization which holds out both hope and opportunity for our young citizens. The National Science Congress this year was based on the theme of innovations in science and technology for inclusive development. Nobel Prize winner Lee Y. T. and Farid Murad were among thousands of scientists who attended the Congress. The five-day National Science Congress witnessed different sessions like on science policies, technical sessions, open house sessions, panel discussions, public speaking, 
Children's Science Congress and Women's Science Congress, which were duly attended by interested participants. Given the multifaceted and symbiotic relationship between society and science and the critical role the latter plays in the development of the former, I would like to focus today on the social and ethical aspects of science and technology and its impact on society. The National Science Congress is a platform which is attended by researchers, scientists and science enthusiasts from all over the world. It provides an opportunity for the sharing of ideas and a stage for the continuous development of science and technology in our country. There will soon be a fresh research into problems like stroke and stress among Indians. This research will be jointly done by scientists from India and Netherlands. The joint research project was recently launched in the national capital by Science and Technology Minister Jaipal Reddy and visiting Dutch Health, Welfare and Sports Minister Edith Schuypers. Here is a report. It is often quoted that prevention is better than cure. With cases of heart attack, stroke and cognitive disorders like dementia on the rise, it is indeed the need of the hour to identify the risk factor in advance and adopt strategies to prevent these diseases. It is with this objective that India and Netherlands have collaboratively launched a unique research project that aims to discover the factors that place people at risk of developing problems related to brain and thereby helping them in advance. The project was launched at the All India Institute of Medical Sciences, New Delhi, in the presence of concerned ministers from both the nations. This project is funded by the Department of Biotechnology, India. The research project will be conducted at the AIMS and will be supported by the National Brain Research Centre, India and Iramus University Medical Centre, Netherlands. Specific rural and urban areas have been chosen for this study whose residents above 50 years of age will be screened for their health conditions at AIMS. These individuals will be provided healthcare advices based on their food habits and will be subjected to half-yearly telephonic checkups and actual physical checkups in every three years. It is anticipated that this study will not only lead to the identification of risk factors of cognitive disorders but also inspire similar studies in future. The project is likely to generate huge volumes of medical data that can fuel novel research projects and provide new medical knowledge that will be helpful in developing new preventive strategies. While India is bound to benefit from Netherlands' experience of running a similar study at Rotterdam for the last 25 years, Netherlands also stands to learn from the unique cultural characteristics of India and the new medical knowledge that emerges from this study. Scientists from India and Australia will soon launch a bio-robo in the Indian Ocean that will help us study oceans in interior biology. The bio-robo, once launched into the ocean, will revolutionize our knowledge of the marine environment. What is this bio-robo and how does it work? Let's find out in this report. Indian Ocean is the third largest ocean in the world and it contains nearly 20% of the water present on the Earth's surface. Indian Ocean is surrounded in the north by the Indian subcontinent, on the west by Africa, on the east by Australia and on the south by the Southern Ocean. But this vast ocean has in its fold number of mysteries. God knows what unknown elements and varied marine life are present in its waters. Which we, in spite of living in this modern world, are totally unaware of. We are oblivious to the untouched secrets of this ocean. Australia's Commonwealth Scientific and Industrial Research Organization and Indian National Institute of Oceanography and the Indian National Centre for Ocean Information Services have collectively started a program under which floating robots fitted with sensors will be launched in the Indian Ocean by the mid of year 2014. The floating robots are named BioArgo. A bio-robot will record temperature and salinity in the interiors of the ocean. Apart from that, it will provide real-time data on dissolved oxygen, nitrate, chlorophyll, dissolved organic matter and particle scattering to further understand specific ecosystems. 
Indian Ocean is surrounded by Indian subcontinent in the north and Australia in the south. This makes this ocean of critical importance to both the nations. The aim of this partnership thus is the understanding of Indian Ocean ecosystems of immediate concern to both countries. By the collective efforts of India and Australia, we will not only be able to unravel many mysteries of the Indian Ocean, but also be able to investigate the origin and impact of possible natural disasters and improve our prediction of them in the future. Agriculture Extension and Technology Mission is soon to be implemented in the country. Recently, the Cabinet Committee on Economic Affairs has approved the mission under 12th five-year plan. Let's take a look at the report to know more about this. India is a country essentially based on agriculture and more than 50% of India's population stays in villages. Agriculture is the backbone of the Indian economy. Under these circumstances, there is good news for farmers of our country. The National Mission on Agricultural Extension and Technology will soon be started for the expansion and progress of agriculture in our country. The aim of the mission is to restructure and strengthen agricultural extension to enable delivery of appropriate technology and improved agronomic practices to farmers. Recently, the Cabinet Committee on Economic Affairs approved the implementation of the National Mission on Agricultural Extension and Technology NMAET during the 12th plan period. NMAET consists of four submissions. The Submission on Agricultural Extension SMAE, the Submission on Seed and Planting Material SMSP, the Submission on Agricultural Mechanization SMAM, and the Submission on Plant Protection and Plant Quarantine SMPP. Under the SMAE, the mission shall try to ensure that new technology reaches the farmers in a very simple way. To alleviate the challenges in the seed sector, the mission shall try to increase production of certified seeds and upgrade the quality of farm-saved seeds. Agricultural productivity has a positive correlation with the level of farm mechanization. This kind of farming shall help sustain the desired agricultural growth and enhance agricultural productivity. Plant protection plays a significant role in achieving targets of crop production and for that, management of pesticides and plant quarantine are important issues. Every year, millions of quintals of agricultural yield are wasted due to climatic conditions or due to pests. It is hoped that this step by the CCEA or the Cabinet Committee on Economic Affairs shall come as a big relief to the farmers as well as help increase agricultural yields. And with that, time for a short break, but there is more coming up on the other side of the break, so keep watching Science Monitor. Welcome back, you're watching Science Monitor, your weekly update on science and technology related news. Now let's take a look at various important science events in the country in our special segment, Science Express. The 26th edition of the Kerala Science Congress was organized at Wayanad recently. The theme of the Congress was Climate Change, Plantation Crops and Spices of Kerala. The Congress was inaugurated by Oman Chandi. Chandi, in his inaugural speech, called upon the scientists to focus their research on the needs of the state. National Capital Delhi recently hosted the 14th edition of Delhi Sustainable Development Summit. Organized by the Energy and Resources Institute, the aim of the summit was promoting India's water, energy and food security in the industry, under which there were high-level composite dialogue held between different industries to promote India's water, energy and food security. There is a good news for all students who have keen interest in science subjects. Now students will be able to do research on their favorite topics. An innovation center has been started in Delhi's National Science Center in which any student can enroll himself and do research on topics of his own interest. The Union Ministry of Science and Technology recently launched a web portal which would enable online submission of research and development proposals. The researchers and officials will also be able to send their suggestions related to the research through this medium. 
2014 National Science Film Festival recently concluded in Bangalore. Well-known artist and chairman of the national jury, Mr. M. Nasir gave away awards to the best science films. Quantum, Stem Cell Therapy for Rejuvenation of Cornea, Delhi Safari and Prism were the films that got the Golden Beaver Award in different categories. Cancer, even the name of the deadly disease causes a shiver down the spine. Cancer is widespread and despite all efforts being made to contain it, there has been a continuous rise in the number of people suffering from it. In fact, 4th of February is marked as the World Cancer Day every year. We bring you more details about cancer in our special report. Some diseases cut our lives short and one such disease is cancer. While 76 lakh people in the world die every year of cancer, there are 1 crore 30 lakh fresh cases reported every year. The mortality rate due to cancer is 13% every year. Not just that, there is a possibility of 1 out of every 3 persons being diagnosed with cancer. By the year 2023, there are chances that one in every five persons of the world will be suffering from this disease. These figures may startle you, but they are just assumptions and they might turn out to be a reality if we don't wake up from our slumber. Looking at the deadliness of the disease, it is important to increase awareness about it. Thus, every year, 4th of February is marked as World Cancer Day. And to throw light on various aspects of this disease, every year a part of it is taken up as focus area. In 2014, the topic of focus is debunk the myths, that is, dismissing misconceptions about the disease. Observing 4th of February as World Cancer Day was started by the World Health Organization since 2005. The aim of earmarking a day for cancer is to help save millions of preventable deaths each year by raising awareness and education about this disease. What is cancer? Cancer is nothing but unregulated multiplication of cells in our body. When this unregulated cell mass affects the tissues, cancer slowly starts spreading in the body. Cancer can affect anyone at any stage and is curable too, provided it is detected in time. Cancer can affect any part of the body or shall we say that it is of various types like cervical cancer, brain cancer, bone cancer, pancreas cancer, prostate cancer, breast cancer, uterine cancer, kidney cancer, lung cancer, bladder cancer and mouth cancer. If we talk of the causes, then there has been no clarity on this. This disease could be genetic too. Besides, increase in weight, sedentary lifestyle, intake of alcohol and drugs, lack of intake of nutritious diet, lack of exercise could cause cancer. As the saying goes, a stitch in time saves nine. It is better to take some simple but serious measures like non-intake of tobacco, attending any cut or bruise promptly, not leaving any bruise or cut open, avoiding junk food and most importantly, inclusion of exercise in our daily routine. It is also important to include apples, jamun, cherry, grapes, walnuts and seasonal fruits in our daily diet. However, considering cancer as the end of life is wrong, as willpower of the man stands supreme and humans can beat this disease by the power of their will. We have many examples to inspire us where people suffering from cancer did not kneel before it. They fought and emerged winners and now they are leading a normal life. Science has developed over the years and how the coming week has added to this development we will get to see in History of Science. The man who discovered iodized salt, Jean-Baptiste, was born on 2nd February 1802. In 1821, Jean-Baptiste discovered that iodine-rich salt could be used to treat water. Hudson Maxim, the man who invented explosives that were used in the First World War, was born on 3rd February 1853. 
Initially, Hudson invented smokeless gunpowder. And then in 1901, he discovered a powerful explosive that was 50% deadlier than dynamite. Elizabeth Blackwell was born on 3rd February 1821. She was the first woman to receive a medical degree in the United States. In fact, she was the first woman to have received such a degree. Being a woman, she was denied admission in many colleges at that time. It was after many difficulties that Elizabeth Blackwell finally succeeded in getting a degree in medicine. American astronomer Clyde William Tombaugh, best known for discovering Pluto in 1930, was born on 4th February 1906. Making this discovery at the young age of 24, Tombaugh surprised senior astronomers of the time. Apart from Pluto, he also discovered many asteroids and constellations. American physicist Robert Hofstadter was born on 5th February 1915. Hofstadter was the one who discovered the presence of neutron and proton inside the atomic nucleus. He was the joint winner of the 1961 Nobel Prize in Physics for his pioneering studies on nuclear structure. How did you find our program Science Monitor? Do send in your views and suggestions. Our email ID is news at the rate vigyanprasar.gov.in. You can also write to us at this address, Vigyan Prasar C24 Kutub Institutional Area, New Delhi 110016. That's all for today in Science Monitor. We will meet next week with more information and news. Till then, goodbye and think scientific.